Hey there, thank you for joining me. Today's episode is going to be devoted mostly to reorganizing our base and restructuring our machinery. But first things first, I'm standing at the wreck that is on the back side, on the right hand side, behind the original waterfall. All the wrecks that have a reactor in it, uh, since the patch, they also have a big save in it that has been revealed. Here it is. I already did loot it, sorry about that. So I put some trash in there, but uh, all these saves have a lot of tarot tokens in them and a lot of valuable goodies that are really worth picking up. For example, also the rack at the warp gate in the desert has also a save in it. The rack in the beginning of the game. So if you play the game, you might want to make sure to revisit those all racks. If you have seen my previous episode, then you know that this is going to be the area where I'm going to build my base, my main base. And this is the former Meteor Crater. Um, I put, put down a lot more storage lockers here because I moved all the materials from the other area, from my previous base, over to here. I completely dismantled that base and that took quite a few hours to get that done. Uh, before I built my base, I decided that I was going to reorganize and restructure all the terraformation equipment. So for example, the drills, the heaters, the farms, algae generators, you name it. Uh, because the optimizer that was introduced in the latest patch really, really changes things a lot. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I've started working on what I call the industrial complex. Over here. Let me say up front that this is a work in progress. But what I've done is, for example, I've put eight heaters down with an optimizer in the middle. Because each optimizer can affect only eight structures. What I want to do first of all is show you the impact of an optimizer with one fuse. And it's just absolutely mind-blowing. I expect this to get nerfed because it's just so much increase. So one heater generates 4.5. Let's, let's call it 4.5 heat. And I have eight of those. So the fuse itself multiplies that by 2,500. If you do the math on that, that means that one machine is going to have the value of 25 machines. Let's put it in there. And if you go back, you will see that it's well over 100 that it generates now. Because this one machine with 4.5 is now 25 times as powerful. So that means that before this patch hit, and before the optimizer was released in the game, I had 25 heaters, ironically. And now I have only 8. But if I do the optimizer with one fuse, that means that those 8 are 8 times 25 heaters. So in all essence, I have 200 heaters standing here. If you do 3 times these fuses, then you will have basically 600 heaters. Yeah, that is totally crazy. It's definitely an improvement, because instead of having to put so many drills down and making the game lag because of all the animation and the movements that is going on, you have less moving parts, so that is that is better, but the values that are being pumped out are just absolutely mind-blowing right now. Okay, so this is the industrial complex. I am planning to put the algae the generators and the farms uh, somewhere in that lake on a floating island, and anything that has to be crafted from that, for example, fertilizer or bacteria samples, um, will be crafted there, so I will put some kind of warehouse, factory structure down. Alright, on our way to the blueprints, hopefully. I think this was the rocket that I sent up. There they are. Okay. And we got some seats, some eggs. So I have this little temporary cabin here where I can look at the energy values, but I can also learn the blueprints. <laughs> Okay, so we have the customizable sofa, not important. Customizable bed, not important. Small fabric. Cooking stations, which is cute. There's a living compartment. A rounded living compartment, which actually looks really fancy. And the dome. I, I don't I don't like the dome because it looks too much like another structure that we have in the game. I mean you have the living compartment dome and then you have the biodome which looks almost identical. Uh, maybe when I put it down, it looks better. All right, guys, so we've been messing around with the optimizers a little bit. And first of all, I'm going to be mightily surprised if this doesn't get nerfed really a lot because they're completely overpowered. And I'm going to show you what the, what I mean by that. And it's also gotten to the point where, frankly, it takes a bit away, the bit of the charm away from the game, I think. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's uh, go back to the heaters. We have eight heaters, as I showed earlier. Optimizer right now is empty. I took it out. So they're all producing at their, their standard default rate of 4.53. So the moment I put one fuse in there, as we know, it will multiply that by 25. So one heater 
as the equivalent of 25 heaters at this very moment. So that is already kind of crazy, but it gets even worse, or worse, crazier. So this is three fuses, so that means that this one now has, as you can see, 7500%, which means that this one heater has the equivalent of 75 heaters. And what you can do, as I showed earlier as well, is you can put another optimizer down. Let's put another fuse in there that affects the same eight. So this heater right now has the equivalent of 100 heaters in this one single heater with two optimizer. So if I delete all these heaters here and I put one heater down with two optimizers and I would fill this one up, then that heater would have the equivalent of 150 heaters in one single heater. Well, that is quite a boost. That would be amazing if we could do that, but uh, <laughs> I'm not questioning that part of it all. I'm just saying that, whereas uh, before, I thought it was kind of charming that you would have to build more heaters. 25 is a little bit over the top, to be honest, you know. But let's say that 10 heaters would be a reasonable number to do your job on this planet. Right now, I can just build one heater and surround it with optimizers, and there apparently is no limit. You can keep going with this. So if you put two optimizers down, that one single heater will have the equivalent of generation of 150 heaters. Now on the other side of the coin, you have the, the energy one. And the energy one is, it's more reasonable, because right now with these four fuses, and I have a total percentage of 600, that means that one reactor has the equivalent of six reactors. It's more reasonable, I think, because you still need more than one to really get all your energy uh, demand uh, met. But, uh, of course, you could probably build one and surround it with all these optimizers. But in this case, it makes more sense to actually build eight energy reactors and put one or two optimizers in there like I have. I have four fuses total. So that gives me 600%. So these eight times six, I basically have 48 energy cells and it's uh, energy reactors. And it's, it's, it's way more than sufficient to provide the energy. But let me show you something else. All right, let me show you that the way I did it before. We take all the, the fuses out, the optimizers don't give a buff by themselves, so we can actually see that the production right now takes 75 seconds. You see it on the bottom of the screen. 75 seconds to pr produce one of these osmium crystals. My fear was that the moment I put optimizers down and fill them up with fuses, that at some point it would go to zero, <laughs> and that you would instantly produce osmium. That is not the case. I filled one up with three fuses, as you can see. That will take it down to 40 seconds. 43 seconds. Uh, that is still uh, not even half of the 75, so that is that is kind of reasonable. If I put three more in there, you will see that it it doesn't go straight down. It, it, it takes more and more and more to go further down. So right now, with six fuses, it takes it down to 30. So that basically means that uh, with six fuses, it takes me less than half the time to produce before. But if you think about that, that is that is still reasonable, I think. That is still doable, because that basically means that instead of... Um, what do I have? I have four extractors. It basically means I have eight at the normal running speed. You know what I mean? Alright guys, time for a little update. I'm mostly done with the industrial complex. Uh, I just have to fine-tune a few things and put some decorations down. Uh, let me show you around. Uh, you've seen this section. These are the eight nuclear reactors with two optimizers. I don't have a completely full. I have four fuses total and that's more than enough. I even put some of the old reactors down because they they look really nice, very colorful and they fit the scenery. Oh, I might have to step aside here. We should be okay, right? I think it's just one pulse or meteor. Awesome. All right. So this section here is for the, the extraction of the gases. So oxygen, methane, and nitrogen. Then this is the drone station. I think I have 28 drones right now. I, I, I could put down 100, but there's really no point. I mean, if you have 100 and when they're done, you have 100 drones sitting around not doing anything. So um, I just have 28. I might make it to 30 to be able to make it an even round number. Some uh, fish tanks for decorations here. Then this cabin is being used to craft the energy cells that I use for trading. And energy cells need pulsar, so I also craft a pulsar here. And then when the energy cells have been crafted, they will be taken to the 
trade area, which is here. It's kind of dark right now, but let me actually, while it's dark, let me show you this tower here. I built a tower to have a view on the, the whole industrial complex. I put some colors around it, also inside. You might be able to see the little bit of green, blue there, with some area lamps. It's uh, very colorful, but uh, I wish it was a little bit brighter. But I can actually go up there, so we can look at the view here. All right, let's go straight to the view. So yeah, I thought this was pretty cool. I'm really happy with the result of this tower. So you can see the, hill, the whole complex here. You can also see the three trade rockets there. And you're probably wondering, what about these water collectors? Well, I think they kind of look like those, what is it, those radio signal dishes, those telescopes to communicate with space. So I thought they would be kind of fitting in that area there. I've shown these before, these heaters here with the optimizer. Uh, when I showed it before in the video, these heaters were actually uh, built slightly higher. This whole platform was higher. But when I decided to put the raw resource ore extractors down here, I have two times five. The only way I could make that fit is if I put them in this layout that I currently have. So I wanted to them all be matching, you know, facing each other. Ten of them. I have an optimizer here that only affects eight of them, but uh, that is fine. I just made sure it affects the, the eight that I really need because the thing is, is that. I built everything manually by hand. I didn't use creator mode, so I used a lot of iron. And especially for the railings, I used a lot of silicon. It was a lot of work, a lot of resources. So yeah, the optimizer came in handy. It's completely full with fuses. But to make a long story short, when I there was only one way for me to do this layout, and that was this. And as a result, these were actually lower than this whole rest of this platform, which drove me up the wall, because um, I'm slightly OCD in games, or more than slightly. And as a result, I decided to make it all even and also make sure that this was actually connected properly to the outside walking areas, walking walls, so to speak. So everything has been adjusted. So I started with these then. Then all this had to come down. The walls were all remade. Everything was redone. Even this platform with everything on it that was already on there before the video. Everything had to be remade because now it's all beautifully even. Uh, the only slight thing that isn't working is the stairs, for whatever reason. Yeah, the, it's attached properly to the top, but I cannot really get it properly to the bottom. But uh, it's not too bad because I can walk on there without jumping. And uh, yeah, that's something that I have to deal with, I guess. But yeah, so I, I used a lot of silicon for all these rails and uh, railings, whatever it is. And I put some lamps here with some colorful lights. In some areas I have some flowers, some decoration. So it's absolutely amazing that one person can do this by himself on an alien planet, but uh, we made it happen. So yeah, it uh, was a lot of work. <laughs> I promised you guys that I was going to build the base this episode, but maybe after I'm done with the farmland, uh, I'm kind of done for now building. Because it, it really doesn't matter. I have all the stuff available, all the resources. At, uh, yeah, if you look at the terraformation index, it's at 92. Um, I think I started this at 48, so I almost doubled my index while building this industrial complex. So that kind of gives you an indication as to how long it took me. I'm going to start working on my farmland, as I call it, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Alright guys, as mentioned, the next step is going to build the farmland. And I put a little bit of a structure down, I'm going to show you what I did. Let's get over there. So I tried to put the structure down right a little bit above the water level, so we can have a walk path. I didn't want to use these uh, these iron foundation grids. I, I I don't think it looks nice in the water. But I will eventually uh, make this see-through with glass, so it looks like a really beautiful uh, walk path. I'll just uh, put some structures down. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to make a platform. Uh, probably this is a three by three. This was one of the new structures that we got. Uh, where's it at? Right here. I'm going to build a couple of these and make sure that we can grow a lot of foods. The algae generators, they will be on the outside in the water. Alright guys, I put the base platform down. It's actually a 3x3 three three of 3x3s. Three wow, that sounded really messed up. And in the middle, I put one of those new structures down. The Rounded living compartment. I'm not able to put this 
exactly in the middle. I've been trying for 10 minutes. I, I'm not able. This is the best I can do. I think it's pretty good. And my hope is now that this one, the living compartment with dome, I notice that they almost have the same shape. That I can put that one on top of there. And we're going to find out if that's the case, because I, I think that would actually look, well, interesting. Let me get some altitude here. Let's see if we can get that on there somehow. Oh, it might be too close. No, nope, that's... That's not good. This looks pretty good. Let's look. Oh, oh. Ah, this is a perfect fit. Uh, and now I want to have a door. Let's see if I can put a ladder in there. And I got some goodies here. Because I'm not sure if I can actually connect the ladder. Where do we want the door, actually? Uh, probably here. Perfect. It's quite spacious. So where do we want the ladder? I'm not sure if I have the materials. Okay. Uh... Oh, well, this might be nice. Okay, let's see where we get it. End up. Ah! Yeah, this looks uh, this looks really nice then. Because I can put windows in here, and uh, this is the same structure as we have up there in that tower. Let me turn the light off. As we have up there in that tower there, so this looks really nice. So that is kind of a shame that I don't have the windows here. But, um, yeah, I think this this looks still pretty cool, I think. Uh, do I have more? Can I put some more windows in? Let's put one there. Let's put one up there. And then I need to get some materials. Yep. So I'm going to do that and finish that off. So that is done. It's unfortunate that I cannot put windows in here, but maybe it even looks better without the windows in there. It looks like a nice little structure. Um, I put the, the storage locker here, the, the shredder here. Put the teleporter inside for now. So ultimately, I will put some storage lockers here and some other crafters, depending on what we're going to bring in and what we're going to produce here. Uh, this platform will be used for mostly farms. So this will be farmland. Then I'm thinking that I also want to do some fish, some water collectors, a lot of algae. So I'll probably pull, uh, pull some, some alleys here, what do you call it, walkways, docks, whatever you want to call it. Maybe in all directions, like make it a little bit of a sort of a star. Uh, like I said, I, I never work with a blueprint. I just I, I kind of fly around and think, you know, what, what whatever gets to me, what I what I like, and that's kind of kind of freestyle at all. All right, we're up in the tower. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. Mm, I'm not totally happy with this. Um, it is completely symmetrical, but. I think I'm going to make the arms a little bit longer, maybe maybe two more. So instead of five, I'm going to do seven. Yeah, let's let's try that. All right, so this is what it looks like after I put down some farms. There's 20 farms on there. I still have to divvy them up as to what I want to grow. The walkways, or the, the extensions, they have all that uh, see-through glass on the top, so that looks a lot better. Now uh, on this white outer rim here, I'm probably going to put some other stuff down, I don't know what. But, uh, yeah, you can see how it slowly is starting to take shape, and, uh, yeah, I like it so far. Alright guys, the farm is mostly done. Let me show you what it looks like from the outside here. I put some more algae down to kind of make it lo look more natural, and uh, I like the way it looks this way. So let's fly over there. Let me actually go out first before I confuse everybody with what's inside. Okay. As you can see, I put out down a whole bunch of algae generators here. And on the outskirts, I have flower spreaders. Then I have a beehive, butterflies, and also frogs. There should be somewhere here. So that's basically what I did on the outskirts all around this lake. So you can see it kind of here. All the way all up to, to those islands there. I also put some water collectors here. Uh, on the walkways, I have actually an optimizer. I only put one fuse in there, so I have four of those. 
they touch the water generators, the water collectors. So you can actually see the, in the background the little arrow pointing down. And right there, another. And some overlap, so they get double bonus. But uh, yeah, basically on each walkway is an optimizer with one fuse to make sure that the water generation is very high because uh, along with the alligator that is being used for the bacteria sample. The other thing I did here is also I put some of these uh, water life collectors here. Now the water life collector, um, inside the building you will see that I will start uh, manufacturing everything that has to do with algae. And you only need the, the variant B. So there's a lot of C and A in here that has to be transported still. And I also put some fish here. Um, for the rest, everything is really taking place inside. You've seen the farms. So we're growing veggies here. Moses eggplant. And uh, let's see, we have also squash. There's, there's a lot of them. And mushrooms, of course. And a little bit of the, the cocoa and the wheat. Because we don't need that much. And beans, you also don't need, need that too much. So only a few uh, growing there. Let's go inside. And we start here. At the fertilizer tier 1. So this is the first thing that's being crafted here. And it's completely full right now. But you can kind of see what it needs. Algae, eggplant and sulfur. So I have to find them. Because I put everything in here. Um... Algae, sulfur, eggplant, fertilizer tier 1. Because that is being used again further on. It's being used to craft tier 2. So you can see that now I have the methane and squash that I needed. So uh, I just have to find it. But yeah, everything is basically, here's the methane. There's the squash. Uh, they're both actually full. Um, so that has been crafted here. Then we go to the bacteria samples. And that is 3 algae and 3 water. If I'm not mistaken. There we go. And then we go to the mutagen tier 1. I just want to show uh, what is needed for this. So you can kind of see uh, all the stuff. So this is all related to the algae generation. Uh, so I have to bring in common lava and honey. Common lava you can actually craft. Common lava is being crafted here. Mutagen tier 4. Well, it's kind of full, but it's, everything is being hauled off. So I guess that... <laughs> The drones are either on the way or it's completely stockpiled. Everything, and this is tier 3, everything is staying in this building except for tier 4 because that is not needed for anything that we craft in here that is basically hauled off. So this is really my final algae farm, if I can call it that. The next episode is only going to be about the base and, well, the final layout. Because honestly, I don't think much is going to be changing anymore with regards to my layout because I've spent so many hours building... And then <laughs> I had to tear that, that whole tower down and rebuild a new base. And yeah, it's, a, it's quite time consuming. It's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying. But uh, yeah, this is going to be my final layout, I think. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.